So I'm sitting there trying to figure out what to make a video about. And I'm looking at all the news stories, none of them are particularly interesting to me. And I start to think to myself, hey, been a while since I just got in front of a camera and just rambled like an idiot. And uh, I don't think I've ever done it since Cody's been my, my camera boy, my camera bitch, I like to call him. I call him that all the time. This video is over! He likes it. He loves it. He wants some more of it. It's an obscure, old-ass reference. Anyone that's like 15 will not get that. So I was looking at the fucking Republican uh, candidates for president. And um, I don't want to comment on their uh, politics at all because I think we can all agree that everything they say is just, you know, horseshit. Like, they might as well just have, like, literal gobs of shit coming out of their mouths, you know, just... Because that's all, you know, it's about as useful as that. So no point in even commenting on what they say because it's clearly pointless. So I'm just going to make fun of their appearances. Michelle Bachman in particular. I'm looking at Michelle Bachman... Uh, during this recent Republican debate on CNN, and and the more I look at her, the more I feel like she was a monster that I feared in my childhood. You know, like when you're a kid and you're standing on your bed and you kind of like leap off the bed and like run because you're so convinced that there's something under there. I'm pretty sure that what I feared was under my bed looked like Michelle Bachman. I, I really feel like... If I was laying in bed today, and I just pulled the covers up, and looked at the foot of my bed, and saw a figure standing there, I would easily choose Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees before fucking Michelle Bachman. If I saw Michael Myers there, I'd be like, oh shit, and I'd jump up and run away. If I saw Jason Voorhees there, same deal. But if I saw Michelle Bachman at the edge of my bed, doing that little fake smile of hers with that weirdly stiff hair that kind of, it has like this weird like falcon wing thing going on. And I saw her there and she had her little hands clasped, and you know, like, oh, I want power. And you just like see her. I don't even, I think I'd be petrified with fear. I don't even think I'd be able to run. I think she would just look me in the eyes and I would get trapped in her soulless gaze and I would just never emerge from that abyss. It's like Nietzsche said, you know, be careful when you look into the abyss because it's looking back into you. That's Michelle Bachman. So she creeps me out and then everyone, uh, Everyone's coming their pants over Ron Paul still, continuously, like, you know, it doesn't matter what you say about the guy, it doesn't matter what you dredge up from his past or show how his positions don't really um, support reality, I guess. They, they, you know, I, I know a lot of progressives who support Ron Paul because of a few little issues and they're willing to ignore all the bad stuff about him. And that's strange, they just, you just, they just walk around with these big Ron Paul boners, like, yeah, Ron Paul, man! Gotta adjust my dick a little in my pants, Ron Paul. He's gonna, he's gonna fix everything. We're gonna get him in the White House. Like, he's like 78. You're gonna get him in the White House so he can be dead in like a week? Who's his vice president gonna be? I'm surprised to see Sarah Palin's not in there. I mean, I know that she doesn't want to be president because, I mean, she clearly doesn't want to be a politician. She gave up on Alaska. She gave Alaska the finger and said, I don't want to be your governor anymore. I want to be a press whore. But you'd figure she'd run for president just for the press. I mean, you know she's not going to win. Wouldn't even win the primary. If she did, then, you know, Barack Obama might as well hold his fucking re-election celebration that night. But it's just surprising to see she didn't run. And I guess, I guess Mitt Romney's going again. Does that mean, like, everyone's always like, oh, his, his liberal past is going to hurt him. That liberal uh, progressive health care package he passed in Massachusetts, that's going to be a detriment to him getting the Republican Party. You know, if the Republicans find out that this guy helped people at one point, he's fucked. But I, I want to know why his, uh, why his religion isn't more of an issue. I mean, even Christians are kind of freaked out by the whole Mormon thing. I mean, the, the magic underwear and, you know, black people are, are the people who, you know, were neutral in the conflict against you know, God and Lucifer, and that's why they're, uh, no, Jesus and Lucifer, I'm sorry, and that's why their skin is, is dark. White people used to live in America at the same time as the Indians, but they were genocided by the Indians. Yeah, and Adam and Eve took place in Jackson City, Missouri, and uh, the founder of the religion died in a jailhouse shootout. 
I mean, you know, you figure these sorts of facts would make his religion a little bit more controversial than it is, but no one brings that up. No one says, can this weirdo Mormon win an election? No one asks that question. And uh, a lot of people make fun of um, Mitt Romney for, for his good looks, but I don't, I, don't see, I don't see it. I don't see his good looks, so I can't make fun of him for that. Um, you're, he's an ugly fuck, in my opinion. But you know, hey, look who's talking, right? And then they got some. They got Tim Pawlenty. All I know about him is that every time I see him, I want to bash his face against a brick wall. So I can't really comment much on him. Um, it'd probably be an improvement too, because I mean, he's got this like Ken doll face going on. You know, earlier tonight I was sitting out there on on, on the swing set. Cause we have a swing set in our backyard from uh, I guess the people who live here before us had kids or something. Or they just liked swing sets. You know, maybe they were swing set enthusiasts. They jerk off on swing sets. I don't know. People are into some strange things. And I'm on the swing set, and um, I had my candy bar. I had a Toblerone. Fat man eating a Toblerone, right? And um, I set it up on the, the little playset area, which is right next to the swing. I apparently also set my phone there. And I'm thinking to myself this whole time as I'm sitting there, like, you know, if you're a stupid, forgetful person like me, you're constantly trying to bully yourself into remembering things. And I kept telling myself, don't you fucking leave your Toblerone and your phone there. Don't you fucking leave your Toblerone and your phone there. Don't you fucking leave your Toblerone and your phone there. And I was so proud of myself because I remembered to bring my, my, uh, my candy bar inside. I'm like, yeah, there it is, right there on the refrigerator. There it is. I remember to bring it inside. Except two hours later, I'm like, where the fuck is my phone? Ah, oh, I left it outside, didn't I? So I go out there, and sure enough, there's my fucking $400 phone sitting out there in the fucking elements for two hours. If it had been raining, I'd have been fucked. Because I, I, the, my fat ass remembers, gotta protect the candy bar, the $2 fucking candy bar, gotta protect that. Gotta make sure that's okay. The $400 phone that I rely on. <laughs> Ooh, fuck that shit. Who needs that? You really can't bully yourself into being someone other than who you really are. That's why I never liked Buddhism. And I know a lot of people like Buddhism, including a lot of atheists. They say, oh, Buddhism, that's not as bad as other religions. I never liked it because the first tenet of Buddhism is let go of attachment and that way you can free yourself from worldly pain. But to let go of attachment, that's, that's so antithetical to the human experience. It's so contrary to your biological imperatives. You, 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 you are a being who wants, who needs, and, and that is like such a huge part of what you are. So to deny that, it, it's not to run away from suffering, it's to run away from your own humanity. I mean, you know, the way I figure it, you're going to be dead. You were dead before, you didn't exist, and you're going back to non-existence. So you have plenty of time to not be human, to not be anything at all. You can be, uh, uh, I mean, you know, you know you're, the particles that make you up, they're not going anywhere. you got the atoms and the particles and the, you know, the, the matter that, and energy that, that constitutes your being. That's not going anywhere. That's going to keep on uh, floating around. But you only have this human consciousness for a short time only. You might as well make use of it. You might as well give in to some temptation and have a little bit of fun. So fuck Buddhism. But um, I got a letter recently. These have none of this is transitional, by the way. It's all just blah, 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 blah. so. Uh, I got a letter recently. This is something I almost made a video about solely, but I couldn't. My printer's not working, so I didn't. I wasn't able to print it out. But I got a letter from a guy who is a militant agnostic. He, he calls he, he actually said to me that he is the greatest agnostic. I'm the greatest fucking agnostic! The greatest agnostic! The greatest agnostic? I mean, like, first of all, to be an extreme agnostic it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, I don't know! With intensity, he doesn't know. Um, Okay, and, and he, he, he brought this argument to me. He's like, I have brought forth an argument which will shatter everything you've ever thought. How can you know for sure there's no God? How can you know for sure? And he said, uh, you know, without knowing, the, the odds are 50-50. So, yeah, it, it apparently, if, 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 if like, any, any unfalsifiable hypothesis that I can pull out of my ass, the odds are 50-50. You know, uh... Is there a unicorn on the other side of that garage door over there? 
Film, film the garage door, Cody. Film it. Is there a unicorn behind that garage door? The odds are 50-50. It could be either way. We don't know. It's 50-50 though, because, because we don't know. If we don't know, then it's 50-50. You see the flaw there, sir. Mr. Extreme Agnostic! You see the flaw in that, right? Um, yeah, it's the same with God, or Thor, or Zeus, or whatever, you know. You pull a deity out your ass. Humanity has worshipped a fuck ton of deities. Every little tribe has its own little sun god, and its own little moon god, and its own little mountain god, and tree god, and brook god, and war god, and so on and so forth. There have been so many fucking deities, most of which we've completely forgotten. We know nothing of them. We don't even have them in our history books. We don't even consider them mythology at this point. They're just gone from the collective memory of humanity. And you honestly think that the, the chance of any of them is just 50-50? No, you're giving special preference to this one God and for no good reason, just because. But there's, why? I don't see why. You know, I'm an agnostic too. I'm an agnostic and an atheist. I don't know if there's a God or not, but I don't believe that there is. In the absence of evidence, I don't think that there is. It's just like I don't believe in Santa Claus. I don't really know that there's no Santa Claus. I can't prove that there's no Santa Claus. I mean, sure, I could go to the South Pole and I could, like, fucking search every square inch, but you could just say, oh, well, you know, Santa's workshop is invisible to the non-believer. You can say that. You can make up any fucking bullshit you wanted to. So I could never really prove that there's no Santa Claus. But of course there isn't a fucking Santa Claus. We all know there's not a fucking Santa Claus. And if there's little kids watching this video, I'm sorry, but yeah, your parents are fucking liars. Santa ain't real. They're buying you the presents. That's why the poor kids get shitty presents from Santa. Because there ain't no fucking Santa Claus. And even if there was, I would fuck him in the ass. All right, our DVDs are uh, entering their final stage of sales, so the remaining DVDs are $10 a piece. Order below, or die. But order before you die. Order before you die. Well, you won't die if you order. That's the whole thing. It's, a, it's an ultimatum. You're gonna die if you don't order. It's just the way things go.